um, I actually touch on this in my, in my classes. Um, there's a whole section on it. Um, and really it comes down to, for me, it's that I've, if, um, these models, whether it's image, video, text, if all these models have been trained on all of humanity on the internet, um, and maybe through scanned manuscripts, physical stuff, I have no idea. Um, I don't really look at it as stealing because um, my art is based on what other people have created, right? Um, I'm looking at all of humanity from the, from the dawn of <laughs> the first breath of life on this planet that, to this moment. Uh, that's, that's my influence. All right, uh, welcome to one more episode of Zero One Cast, uh, a place where humans create and machines dream. Uh, today we had a very pleasant conversation with Milan Tutuk. Uh, Milan, it's really focused on script writing. He's also teaching AI uh, online, and he, he shares some very interesting books and was really inspirational conversation. Uh, what, what's your thoughts, Mauricio, about this conversation we had with Milan? Yeah, Milan was super passionate about everything he was talking about. You can see that he can live and breathe what he's, he's, he's mm -hmm. doing in his, his life. It was quite nice to see his, his point of views on, on AI itself and impact on the filmmaking and script writing process. Uh, some details about his course that honestly made me want to, to do it, to learn how to proper script writing. Maybe he can and... give some free codes for us to do his course. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. But yeah, it was a really inspiring and passionate episode. And if you want to learn a little bit about script writing, this is definitely for you. All right, so let's cut the blah, 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 and let's go to the episode, and we hope you enjoy. Let's go. Hello, everyone. Uh, today we have here with us uh, Milan Tsutsuk. That's the right pronunciation. Uh, I think uh, so Milan very nice to to have you here today uh, yeah we know Milan from Twitter he's making some some great AI movies he's also teaching AI and I think script writing so yeah we were looking forward for this conversation we would like many things we want to talk about and I'm also here with my co-anchor Mauricio uh, and we have yeah some interesting things to talk to you and I will shout out, let's start. Uh, mm. So before talking about AI, let's talk about the Milan before AI. So <laughs> how, how was your routine before AI and how did it change it after AI? And like, like right now, how much time are you spent working on this topic lately? For sure. Um, before AI, primarily about 15 plus years of um, UX UI website design stuff, um, backend website hosting, work ho hosting CRMs for people that are doing big brand marketing stuff. Um, and then a lot of independent filmmaking just on my own or helping other people out. And then um, a lot of writing. Um, I wrote a novel like 12 years ago that I'm currently adapting for my next AI project. And from my love of writing and really just cinema in general, um, I was always doing creative projects, but my, my, my passion is filmmaking. And so anything I was working on, even if I was doing website stuff, I was always trying to kind of give it an eye of, um, I don't know, like a cinematic aesthetic. Like, like it could be a corporate website, but it could still look and feel a certain way that really drew you in. And um, so that's always kind of my goal and what I've been doing basically since the last 15, 20 years. Yeah. Mm hmm and how how does and how it now how did how did it change our routine this AI thing, and these tools and this community? How, how is our routine right now? Did it change much? Yes, yes. Um, my my lifestyle and my creativity, everything. Um, basically, I I've said this a couple times on Twitter too. Like I was just dead inside creatively and didn't really even really recognize it. And a lot of the work I was doing was creative, but it was for other people. It was mm -hmm. within their situation. So when AI came into my life um that went that flipped back the other way and what also helped was getting really objective feedback from not only just the ai community but just 
people in general. I don't, I don't, I don't really do social media. I don't put a lot of stuff out even before this. Mm -hmm. So um, the world opened up to me in a really positive way where I made a lot of connections, um, a lot of friends like yourself here, working pe with people that really understand the balance between, yeah, I have my life, but also I'm an artist, and I'm creative. And basically the advent of these technologies has helped myself and many others blossom again and, and really get out to getting back to our roots of being creative. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we have families, we have jobs, we do things, but if all that fell apart, I'm still artistic and I want to express that. And so in short, everything did change pretty dramatically and pretty quickly, especially when runway came out in June. So from January to June, I was just basically mid journey, but anything AI, anything. I had like a bookmark folder that was like, yeah, I have it. It's just growing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I had to put it on my vertical monitor because it was so long. And, and I don't use any of those things now because a lot of stuff was just a flash and a pan. And so mm -hmm. I'm focused on storytelling through AI tools now. Beautiful. No, that, that's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, nice yeah. to hear that. And uh, we can, I think we will, we'll talk about more also creativity uh, on the other questions, but uh, I was also reflecting about that recently. Uh, that you know, I'm I'm creative for 15 years, like like officially, like on the market and with design, photography, and music as well. But after this AI thing, I think I never been so much creative in my life uh, ever before, yes. like now. And yeah. I was like always creating stuff, but mm. now I'm really like super creative. It really boosts my creativity, my motivation yeah. to create to bring my ideas to life. And I think that that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's key, right? It's just like, we have opportunity now and we don't need, um, we don't need a lot of other resources other than our internet connection and our brain and our heart. And that's a, that's a really big deal for, for humanity. <laughs> and um, you were asking, you know, how, do, how do I, you know, how much time am I spending each day or what are, what are my daily things like? And one of those things um, I'm really trying to work on is being grateful for opportunities that have come my way, grateful for the people that have made this technology. And so a, a portion of my day, what I'm starting is to sort of take a moment and be mindfully grateful for this and that I'm alive here. I have all my years of talent and skill set that have all come to this moment that I can really do something with it. And I know I'm not the only one that feels that way, like yourself, like you're saying. Yeah, that's um, interesting. Even yeah. me and Maurice yesterday, we were talking about yeah. meditation and mindfulness, mm -hmm. like to take this 15 minute break every day. And mm -hmm. you're also talking about David Lynch, Transcendental Meditation. And I also read nice. the book. So I was mm -hmm. yesterday we were talking about it. And also Perfect. this AI is really overwhelming, right? There's a lot of information and, and tools and Twitter is like crazy. So I'm really... It's becoming really important to go back to meditation at least 15 minutes a day to just clean up my head. Uh, 100%. Yeah. So just to to break up the ice a bit. So mm -hmm. what are your favorite directors, movie directors, and did they inspire you? Uh, which, which directors you like and did, do they inspire mm -hmm. you in some way to create your movies? Um, yeah. So a lot of my favorite directors... A couple foreign directors I like, um, Jean-Pierre Junette, um, primarily Amelie. That was like really inspirational for me. And then um, another foreign one, a French director, um, Michel Gondry, mm -hmm. um, Eternal Sunshine, um, his biggest one. And, um, and then I jump all the way over to David Fincher, Stanley Kubrick. Um, I could go on for like 30 years about my favorite <laughs> films and directors, but um, primarily those, those stuck at, stood out to me a lot in the last 20 years because um, I'll take it for an example. When I saw Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind in the theater, I would, not only was ditching school to see it, which I loved doing, and, but it was like one of these first films that I saw in a theater playing globally um, that made me realize, oh, I'm not alone in the sense of how I think creatively, of how I want to mix digital um, effects with physical effects. And so Michel Gondry, who directed that, that was, he really helped me kind of break out of that mindset of like, it doesn't have to look a certain way, just make your movie. You know, and Tarantino says that a lot too. You know, mm -hmm. he's like, make the movie you want to see. And I've taken stuff like that to heart. Another example, Stanley Kubrick, like, I don't know the exact quote, but it was from his daughter um, talking about how no matter how busy 
he was like he could just be like you know just so focused on um, editing a screenplay or adapting you know a screenplay or, you know from a novel or anything but he would always make time to play with the kids always make time to play with the family to be with the family um and uh something else he he, he talked about too was like you know it might not and again i have no idea where i heard this but i know i know what he said at some interview um where you know you have you're the director you have your ideas you know what you have to do all the weight of the studio everyone's safety everyone's time expectations are so much weight on your shoulders but at the end of the day not only do you have to sort of make that you have to be the decision maker to say yes or no about something and but also be open to everyone's ideas like you can't literally sit there and listen to a hundred people on set talking to you about their their ideas for a shot or something but I think that mantra and that general idea of like, just because you're the director um, doesn't mean that you're not, you can't be open to other people, other ideas and like, yeah, you're in charge and it falls on your shoulders, but you need to be fluid. Um, and I've seen um, behind the scenes stuff with David Fincher that has sort of, I felt like that's in the same vein. And so when I look at those two ends of the spectrum where on the creative side, you have like Michel Gondry or Jean-Pierre Jeunet, mm -hmm. um, doing these really fantastical things and camera mixing with effects also. But then on the other side, that's like the creative end. I thought the other end is more of like these hardcore disciplinarians like Kubrick or like Fincher, where when you say their names, you know what kind of a film you're going to see. And that's because of how hands-on they are. But at the same time, they were, they're both really open, were and was really open to um, other people's inspirations. And mm -hmm. so that's, again, I'm, I'm being long winded about the idea that my inspirations come from a mixture of creativity and discipline. Mm -hmm. and, and do these guys, uh, yeah, also share some, some of your tastes, do they directly influence you when you create your AI movies? No, no, it's more just like, you know, imagine take your favorite food that you, what that you've eaten a lot of in your life. Um, and you can make your own recipe of it and it's not going to taste the same, right. As somebody else's idea of their recipe. And so the influence for me just comes from having a lot of, uh, having tasted a lot of recipes, having watched um, a lot of uh, just all kinds of movies and just finding a passion for storytelling through that. And um, so you could say it's an influence, but I think it's more just like, <laughs> you know, I had, I had that pizza a couple years ago. That was a really good pizza. I'm going to try and make my own pizza <laughs> and kind of see what happens. So. Nice, nice man. It, it seems by the, by your references as influences and everything that the story itself, the script writing is quite important. Like independent if it's AI, CGI, whatever you're using to bring these stories to life, right? Mm -hmm. Especially on, for example, a thousand miles. I think it's the story on that one is is so incredible. Oh, uh, you. Can you take a little bit on the process that you do for script writing? And yeah. the storytelling creation of your films? Absolutely. Give me one second. I'm going to cough. You can edit this part out. <laughs> Hold on one sec. Um, yeah, thank you for the compliment. Um, honestly, for a thousand miles specifically. Um, so I, ha I have a list, a Google Doc that says ideas. And I have about 30 plus ideas that are, some of them are just a title. Some of them are a title with a bunch of stuff below it. Um, some of them are completely fleshed out, right? And so for a thousand miles, I don't know why, but that turned out to be one of the ideas that I kind of ran with. And it um, it literally was just a title and a single sentence. And um, so I, I had the, I, you know, I write, direct, and edit, and produce from my heart, you know, and it, that's not going to please everybody. And so I just have to do what I like and deal with if people like it or not. And so something like a thousand miles, I, I just was shooting from the hip. I didn't have a script for it. I literally was um, doing text to video and runway and went on their earlier model in June. Um, and then from there, I was taking it into Premiere. I would drop it in. I already had some music picked out. I would see how the, how the emotion flowed. And then I was writing a script on a Google doc and then making the voices in 11 labs. So I was doing all that pretty much kind of just nonstop for, you know, eight hours. And then the second one was a little bit longer, like three days. And then the final cut, that's like 11 minutes long, you know, maybe like 40 hours total put into it. If that, um, 
Now that's not how I would do. Like I'm working on one right now for the Runway Film Festival, um, and I'm I'm treating it like like real real production in the sense of writing the scripts, just doing every literally doing everything I would do um, for a real production, but it's it's virtual. Yeah. That's awesome, man! Quite incredible. Yeah. And we are going to see some next parts on Thousand Miles, or <laughs> you you stop yeah. right there. Oh, sorry. What, 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 what was that? You cut out. Sorry. That uh, if you we want, you will see more parts on a thousand miles. You know, I've wanted because I don't have I don't have too many followers, but I feel like I have a lot of friends, and so I really kind of wanted to put a poll out on my on my Twitter to be like, because I've talked to, thought about doing ten minute episodes, and so I or until like and do like a limited series, like five ten minute episodes, until just one one little story. Um, so I. I don't know. Yeah. So as a, if someone came to me and was like, Hey, let's make this a real movie. That's what I would focus on. <laughs> I would go out and shoot. I would really shoot this movie, but for AI stuff. Yeah. If people wanted to see, like somebody asked me to start a Patreon and do, do my episodes on there. So it'd be, I, I would love to, it's just a matter of balancing. Um, Cause I'm all freelance currently. And so it's a matter of, you know, keeping, keeping the lights on <laughs> <laughs> while, while fi finding ways to keep the lights on while also um, being creative. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I think a lot of people, especially with AI that is not that accepted yet is, is, is struggling a little bit with it. I think this Changing... year will be good for everybody. We'll get, we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree for mm -hmm. sure. Changing a little bit for your, your other, let's say role right now, I saw they were teaching people in, in AI filmmaking. So how, how has been the experience so far? Did you teach people before AI in filmmaking also, or, or you started with AI? Um, I've never formally taught complete strangers the way I did for my AI class. That, that was unique having people globally in the class. Um, but I, I do have a personal passion for teaching. That's something I'd like to do down the line, um, plus filmmaking. So um, the class was really cool. Um, I learned a lot. I know my I know the students learned a lot. And I think the biggest takeaway for me was my personal process of how I created 1,000 Miles is too overwhelming um, for anybody other than myself. And that's not to say I'm better than anybody or I can do better stuff because that's not true. It's just that every artist has their own process and uses their tools the same way. You give you know multiple directors the same script, you're going to get multiple films. And so I, I feel like <clears throat> that's the same way when, but that's what I learned on my end from teaching the class was like, this is too overwhelming for somebody starting from the ground up. I'm coming from years of experience doing multiple disciplinary, multiple disciplinary, disciplinary workflows. And I think the students, um, I got really good feedback on my teaching style and people um, were, seemed to be objectively enjoying the class. Um, I wish people were able to create more stuff. And so that's something I'm working on for my next um, video class um, is to make sure that they can leave the class like 110%, leave the class with something they're proud of, even if it's four seconds. <laughs> to, you know, um, And I was trying to do that in this class, but again, <clears throat> to go from an idea to, to writing it, to producing it, to editing, to having it all done in two weeks, that's a lot. You know, That should be like a semester, not, not two weeks. Um, and so I'm doing, and the, and the second thing I learned was splitting the class up. One is for video, for, for learning how to use runway and all the, all the runway suite stuff. And the other one's going to be just for writing. Um, and this, um, I could actually, you know, I could give you some more information about that um, later on. Just, I'm trying to launch that in two weeks or less. Um, anyway, so right. the, the writing, yeah, I think the, and at the end of the day, that, that's where I, you know, my, my process and how did I start? It's mainly, um, I'm coming from years of experience and passion and, and I have a love for teaching and I like teaching because I learn at the same time. I learn about myself. I learn from the students. I find, I discover tools or techniques. I had no idea. Um, and so one thing I've seen in this community is that there are plenty of people that are technically infinitely more technically proficient than me. Their videos look better, the quality is better, et cetera. But nine times out of 10, if not more, I'm so bored because there's no story there. It's a lot of cool shots, the music video. And that's awesome because you should, you should learn. I did the same thing when I started. And I think, you know, we all learn to do what we do, but 
um, I'm on a vendetta at this point to really help people focus on storytelling while using, like start with the foundation of story and build your house and your framework on top of that foundation. And you'll, and you'll be off to the races. <laughs> Great. Yeah. A few, a few comments here. I think, yeah, I also have my, these note blocks with ideas. Uh, it's very similar. Some of them are just one short description. Some of them are a title and a description. And I, when I have these insights or something, whatever I want, I try to take notes. Okay. This can be a nice short movie, but the thing I really like talking about ideas for short movies, because before I never, I never imagined I would be a movie creator before. So yeah, yeah, I say, yeah. okay, like there's this interesting idea. Maybe I can make a short movie about it. And I, I think this is this is uh, really really nice, uh, yeah. So I try to really take notes because now I know that I can transform it in something visual, uh, yeah. And and I have the same uh, same feeling as you. Uh, also, the day I was posting on Twitter, uh, I don't think that's a problem uh, mm -hmm. to make a nice trailer or something. But I think and also I think there is this natural maturation of this market and of this community as well. I also like how we all share and learn together uh, techniques or prompts or whatever. But also I think like right now or even last year, I would say maybe 40, 50% of the AI movies were not okay, not not much. Maybe 40% were like trailers, right? Like that's the mm -hmm. thing. You put some, this formula of cut and dance music. And again, I have nothing against it, just to be clear. It, it's nice to see, it's nice exercise. And I think, but then you, you start to go steps beyond it, which is exactly like, okay, where is your character? What's the conflict? How, how you're solving it? Uh, like going more deep. And I, I think I, I myself, I'm on this process looking for more uh, deepness on my story, right. on my characters and, and things like that. So basically for, for you, like when you have an idea, for example, for AI short movie, where do you start? What happens first? My ideas often, um, you know, I, a lot of my shots and ideas and stories are built around music. And I, I stand on the shoulders of um, everyone that makes music because music came before filmmaking. Um, and when you when you listen to music and you close your eyes and, and you really process it, you know, it, it's it's so magical and so special. And it's it's and so like that spiritualism that i feel for music as an art um is what i owe a lot of my creativity to That's cool. in the sense yeah yeah and then um i have a friend who um pr produces music and engineers tracks and different things and over the years 20 20 plus years watching him do this um you know, I'm just, I'm just floored. Like he, he's blown away at how I, how, how I write a story. Well, that's, that's one thing. Well, I don't know how you just open up fruity loops or <laughs> whatever and start dropping a beat that is, is awesome. Um, or making classical music. So a lot of my stuff, um, but th then again, sometimes I'll just have an idea pop into my head with no music and it could be, a sh it could be a scene. It could be a title. It could be a shot. Um, and what I'm really doing, what I've really learned over the past year, especially, and this kind of goes back to getting back to my personal artistic roots, is I create an um, emotion, and I like to consume emotion. So if I'm going to go see a movie, like recently, I saw the holdovers twice in the theater, because I I liked the aesthetic and I liked the emotion. The story's great too, which is awesome. But um, so I, when I'm making my stuff, I it's something I call vetting process to say. Hey, this is a cool idea, but do I want to spend a day or a year trying to work it out and, and see if it's good? Or is there a way to vet this idea and find out if it's a good idea or not a lot faster? And I know that that concept of saying something is good or not good is completely subjective. And because of that, you, I kind of, you, you know, at least for me, um, when I'm teaching a class or I'm trying to just teach somebody how I do my process, I have to draw a line in the sand of saying something is good or bad as far as quality of what I'm personally trying to achieve. And um, when it comes to storytelling, I, I take that same concept. And so I actually run it through a process um, where I try and fill in a blank. Um, and it's basically a log line. And again, I can um, I can give you more, some more information on this if you want to, would want to post it with the podcast. But um, it's something I teach in my class. It's something I can talk about for free too. And it's um, it's filling in 
little different aspects of a log line. Like a character does this. Um, they face these challenges, these adjectives, these goals. There's little ways to plug it in. Mm -hmm. um, and it may feel very constrictive and like this isn't really creative. And then, But it, what it does is that it forces you to take this nebulous gas and try and make it a solid mm -hmm. and try and see. And, and then from that solid, can you carve something out of that and make a beauty, something beautiful <laughs> that people That's not only want to see, but will they pay to see it? Right. And, and the money is a byproduct of the success of the art just existing. Who cares? Right. Like I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep putting movies out regardless of making, making money or not. <laughs> so, um, again, long story short, <laughs> it's the, oh, very uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I was not expecting yeah. that music will be the, the answer to be honest. So it's really interesting. <laughs> uh, me and Maurice, Make we these. are musicians ourselves as well. We are oh, also okay. really passionate about music. Uh, yeah, I'm also a record collector. Uh, oh, cool. So yeah, music, it's uh, what I would say the most important layer of my life. It's, it's music. It's always with me. It, it helps me create. It helps me go through hard times. It helps me enjoy good times. And yeah, music, yeah. it's also, uh, and I also also like a lot instrumental music because it, like, you know, when you're listening to music, you're creating this film on your mind, right? Yes, you're creating yes. images and scenes and feelings and colors and this synesthetic layer of music. And I also like instrumental music because there's even less bias of the lyrics. It yes. really, it, each person, so yeah, I have an instrumental post-rock band. So each person, they visualize something different or when they tell me or they feel something different. And I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, music, it's, it's very yeah. important. And I think it's just did... for creativity, right? 100%. And the way you just described it, where you're like, it's multi-layered. Um... Have you guys seen the movie uh, Ratatouille? Which one? Uh, rat, rat, Ratatouille with a little mouse. Yeah, in yeah. France. yeah, yeah. And when he when he bites into the food and he kind of blacks out and like he sees and he's like vision. That's how it is. For, I'm getting chills talking about it because that's how that's how it is for me creating. If I bite into the music, I'm like. Phew. But then again, I could just be driving and like see somebody on the corner and like boom, there's a whole story, you know. Yeah. So that's, it's yeah. That's cool. Yeah. No music. It's. I think okay. also it's so, it, it, like, like you said, it's come from the beginnings, right? And it deals with our deep parts of our human, oh. I think, parts and also like animal parts and everything. 100%. But yeah, changing a bit the topics from music to traditional AI film industry. So I know that you have some experience on the traditional uh, film industry. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about it. But my main question will be like for you. What are the main impacts and transformations that AI will have on this classic film industry like, and how fast it will be? Um, as far as making an impact, would you say like as big as something like adding sound to or adding color, like something that big to, to you know, like the way like the history of cinema, you know, it started off black and white silent. They added sound and they added color, then they added people of color acting you know, like all these big advances, right? Socially, technology-wise. And I think that's what's happening right now where it's not just the technology, it's the, it's the society. And I, um, I've had a few conversations um, with people that are in the trenches of not only shooting films that are currently on um, cable channels or working on future films. And there's like this really exciting, passionate side of people wanting to know about AI but then there's the pride, fear, ignorance, and lack of understanding and outright misinformation um, surrounding it. And I think that's dying down compared to how it was, say, six months ago. Um, but overall, I think the impact is going to be not as fast, I don't think, and not as fast as, as everyone thinks it's going to be. But then again, I see people doing a lot of anim animation with Runway. Um and I think that will that will you'll see animated movies or TV shows faster than you're going to see video that looks as normal as you and I talking right now, right? And may, maybe I'm dead wrong. Maybe it'll happen tomorrow. We don't. AI is crazy, right? <laughs> but um, I think at the end of the day, I, I just don't. I don't think it's going to have some gigantic, damning impact the way everyone, uh, everyone, the way a lot of people think it's going to happen. Because when I go to a movie currently, I can I have multiple options. I can see a, a normal two-dimensional movie or I can go see a 3D movie with glasses or I could see a 3D movie where it's on three sides, front and on the sides of the screen. 
or I can go to a movie where the chair is moving and there's special effects and sounds. So I can see that same movie four different ways currently. So what's the big deal if I go to the theater and there's an AI option and it's just a movie, but it's AI, <laughs> you know? Um, so I think that's, that's kind of where I'm coming from is like a distributor producer side too of saying, I think everyone needs to chill out. It's not going to, it's not going to take your job, blah, blah, blah. And if it does take your job, um, that's what technology does. Sometimes it, it, it replaces jobs. And then I, but the one job that it currently definitively cannot replace, at least currently is the storytelling. You mm -hmm. cannot do good storytelling with GPT. You cannot, I mean, you can sort of with tools and like, like, you know, like we're making for um, the GPT storytelling tool stuff, but at the end of the day, it has to come from your heart. Yeah. So for me, that that's the ceiling of AI right now or any technology is like, when you, when I can go see a movie, I don't care. I don't care about the quality. But if you if I see the whole movie and I leave the theater crying with joy and I'm happy or I feel I feel amazing, and you tell me AI wrote the movie every single line with no human editing, that okay, I'll believe you. <laughs> <laughs> but but I I don't think that's going to happen too soon. So that's that's the benefit we're we're up, up against right now. Sorry, I don't mean to go off. I get really passionate about this. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> No worries. Don't worry, man. We're here for this. Talking a little bit about festivals and awards, and bear with me, it's a kind of three part question. Uh, what is the importance of those things to you? What do you think AI film festivals should do to differentiate from common, normal uh, film festivals? And how already established film festivals should accept and work with AI from now on? Mm -hmm. Those are really, really, really awesome questions. Um, the importance of the awards, uh, the, the awards I've won for me were, I've never, I, I've never won anything like that. I've never, even for someone to comment on a video and say, this brought me to tears, that's an award. I'll take that, right? Over money, over fame and fortune. Like that's the goal. So to get some money from this stuff or to win a couple categories um it is important but not in the way that i think a lot of people might feel and what i mean by that is that um fame and fortune are awesome but that's not my personal goal like i don't my, my goal isn't necessarily to win an academy award but it would be an honor to be selected for the national film archives you know what i mean like that to me is like higher than winning an award or money and stuff so I think for these festivals currently, it's important for the creators to win awards because it lets them know that there's ob that objectively you're doing a good you're doing a good job. You know, like like we as people who watch thousands of films saw your AI movie and said, "Holy dang, wow!" Or, yeah, it's AI, but I felt something, and so that that is important to give creators, especially people that really don't do film festivals. Because this is until last year, I never entered professionally entered a film festival like i did um same yeah yeah so the important i think the, the big importance comes down to it giving creators the objective feedback that you're on the right track keep going basically um what do i think about the festivals and how they should differentiate from normal festivals so let's take sundance because i applied to sundance with two films didn't get him so i look at that like a did they even watch my film because they had almost eighteen thousand submissions this year They say they watch them all. I don't know. I hope they do. That's cool. B, they did watch it. They didn't care about it. C, they watched it and it was concerning to them and they said, we can't show this. <laughs> uh, D, they watched it and they just hated it. That's all there is to it, right? And so that's kind of how it is for AI, film, whether it's an AI festival or a normal festival at the top of the chain like Sundance or Berlin or Cannes, um, is that I think that there, I think for normal festivals like Sundance, especially um, I'm going to, I'm going to pick, not pick on them, but call them out in the sense of whether it's my AI movie or any AI movie, you need to know that this is a real thing. It's, it's not just a flash in a pan. Um, this is real storytelling. It's going to be, it's going to give opportunities to real storytellers and it already has. So that itself is really important. And then secondly, um, 
especially when you're one of the bigger festivals. I, I don't think it's a bad thing to open up a new category to what I personally consider to be um, the eighth the eighth art form that we're experiencing in this digital renaissance in the sense of, and not just digital, it's a, I, I call it a renaissance because it's so, it's, it's life, it's been life-changing for me and so many people to the extent that there's no, there's no way that this is just a fluke. There's no way that this is like, you know, a bubble. I just it's don't feel that at all. Stay right. Uh, yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I also yeah. I think I like. I think this tradition of films they don't know exactly how to deal with that, right? So we yes. are this yeah. this phase with everything is a bit blurry. So I think right. like should we open a new category? Should we don't accept it at all? Should we create? A, but I'm seeing that like some new festivals are being created just focused on AI, and I think this is also very interesting as well. Uh, but even like when I also, for example, uh, uh, I became a film creator by accident. I think like many people in this community and even you, Mila, introduced me to this film freeway platform, which is like the place to go if you want to submit to festival. And I, I had no idea that it exists because I was never a filmmaker. And then I would start to dig deeper on this. And I also submit my work to some festivals and everything. And it's quite interesting. But for example, when I see some interesting festival, and at least like most part of the time, right? They do, they don't have this AI category if it's not an AI film festival, but they have the experimental category, right? So, but then I ask myself, is my AI movie considered experimental or not? That's that's what they told me. Those those are some of the words I want. The experimental, right? And Sundance didn't have an experimental, and I don't think Cannes uh, does or Venice or Berlin. Maybe they do. I I don't know, but. I think you're. I think you're dead on the the money and said, saying. Um, I think they should have a category for it. I think every major festival, at minimum this year, um, needs to either be considering it or preparing to have one, if not already have one for for the next season. Because the I think what you're doing with 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 um, this project and the website and the curation and to me it's really stood out as the most professional go to spot. For what for, and it's not even it's barely even off the ground right and i think that that's important to have a, something like this but also have the traditional stuff and they're and you know they're like uh they're hand in hand it's like two oxen pulling the cart and they're yoked and they're moving together mm -hmm. and they're helping pull pull everything behind it and what they're pulling is good storytelling Right. Yeah, exactly. They want to, in the end, it's all about the story. You can use paper but, clips. You can use stop motion. Like, doesn't matter. Like, make doesn't yeah. make you feel something. And that's what I'm it's, saying. Yeah. It's all about the story in the end, right? It's not about and AI. Is just one more tool for us to tell our stories, uh, which yes. is really empowering. 100%. And also, just to to clarify a bit, is yeah, we create this GPT called Filmmaker Pro, uh, and the, the our main goal again, we even put a disclaimer there that it was not created by Harry Potter, right? It's <laughs> it's not a magic yeah. tool. It right. will not make the movie for you. Our our main goal is really to like make uh, reduce the barriers for people who are curious and interested on that, and maybe they want to create some AI movie. They have a place to start, and the the, the thing can guide you through the process because they like, people have no idea even where to start. So it's kind of reduce the is it initial friction for some lower the entry bar who yeah. want to start exactly, and it can right. also boost and empower and increase. Uh, the ones who are already doing it and have some knowledge. So that's our main goal, basically, uh, with this tool. And and still 100%. talking about uh, uh, festivals. So I, I assume you're applying maybe to several or a few ones. Are you are you facing more rejections than acceptances, or how how is it going with this? No, I've been I've been pretty blessed. Um, pretty much every festival that I've entered, um, people actually reached out to me. Um, to enter them my maybe one or two didn't but um, a lot of people reached out to me and were like hey we saw your movie we think you should enter into this festival <clears throat> here's a discount code and um i think that's something to bring up too is like when you're entering these festivals i think it's okay to be uh, picky and to be strategic and some of these festivals are brand new and some of them have been around for 20 years or longer and part of that is um you know, what do you spend? So say it's like 60 or 80 bucks to enter something. It's like, what are you spending this money on? What's your trajectory here? What do you want to do with your film? Do you just want to get an award? Are you trying to get representation? Do you want someone to produce this into a real film? Um, so yeah, I think as from what, what I'm trying to do this year, um, the next thing I'm submitting, the first thing I'm going to submit to 
um, is my project to the Runway Film Festival. And then um, kind of keep going from there, but be really picky about which ones I'm going to submit to. And mainly I'm trying to submit to the bigger ones. And frankly, I'm just going to keep submitting to the bigger ones until somebody says yes, and we'll just keep going, you know. For sure, man, for sure. Makes makes total sense. Uh, what do you consider to be this essential skill set to become a successful AI filmmaker? I think you touched already some points, but what, what do you think is the whole package? I'm a firm believer in, in what I what I call picking a lane. Like stay like pick a lane and focus in that lane for a little bit. Get really good at that. And I know people that think the opposite. They're like, hey, there's nothing. You, you should learn all the tools, all the AI tools, all the legacy tools, all the Adobe suite. You, I guess, I don't know how, I, I, if that's going to help you personally, go for it. But for me, the biggest essential tool, as I keep saying, is just the story. Because the technology will only advance. You know, we went from uh, eight, eight millimeter silent film to making runway video with a computer in my pocket. And in less than a, what, 150 years, 130 years. So at the end of the day, all that technology is, is wonderful, but is your story worth watching? Did it, so the, I guess the big thing is just focus on learning how to be a good a story and focus on being a good storyteller, learn how to write from the ground up, study the greats, etc. And by the greats, I mean literally go back to Plato, Aristotle, look at what that meant. Look at or the tradition of oral history and oral story storytelling across cultures globally. Um, because again, like I, I don't want I, I've seen certain films and certain franchises that are on 8K footage and just you know hundred million dollar budget and every movie stars in it, and I fall asleep at 20 minutes. <laughs> And that's just me. I'm super picky. I'm hard to please. But um, learn how to write. And secondly, the best part about learning how to write, you don't have to wait, especially as a director, AI or traditional, you don't have to wait around for anybody. It's your story. You don't have to wait around for a script. You don't have to say, hey, I'm looking for someone to help me write. You can just do it. And uh, even, in, even in traditional filmmaking, the writers hold a lot of power, just as we saw with the strike that just happened, right? And the, 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 the writing is the fuel to the engine of storytelling and movie making. So yeah, learn how to write. <laughs> That's great, I think great advice. <laughs> yeah. 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 And maybe yeah. in the end, you can also the, maybe recommend some books for, for our listeners uh, that you recommend actually, about script writing. We'll, yes. We'll, we'll, we'll be um, great. Yeah, I, Mom, I can tell you right now the, the three that oh, I... Go for it. Um, just so I don't get them wrong, so here's the first one. Uh huh. The art of dramatic writing. Mm -hmm. The book's falling apart. <laughs> you can this see it's really right used. <laughs> yeah, this is an old. I've had this for almost 20 years, but um, this book changed my life. This is all about how to write. This is for playwriting, but it's also, but it's it translates perfectly to filmmaking, and it it really taught me how to write character heavily. Um, another, this is this one classic, mm -hmm. um, which is based on this. Yeah. Yeah. We also wanted yep. to, to join this topic of Joseph Campbell and, and the myths. And nice. I also, I started to, to write, uh, to read the previous one based on your advice. Oh, and nice. I'm, uh, nice. I'm Good. really enjoying it. Yeah. And I also, I mentioned you like, I, even before all of this AI, I was always interested in psychology and Carl Jung and the archetypes. Yes. And so I, yes. I kind of, when I started nice. to read, I say, okay, I got this because I have some background already. And it, but it, again, it's right. And but it's also on the intro, he's saying that it's not a formula, right? It is about That's taking all... this and doing our own stuff with it. it it's not like this yeah. strict formula, right? And, and I, and yeah, 100%. But I, and I look at that like if, it, I mean, you, you're saying you're both composers. Um, you have to learn. You have to learn theory first before you can compose, am I, right? And so, I think, and maybe there's some savants that don't. They could just sit down and start playing. But I, um, when I was taking piano lessons, <laughs> you know, I, you had to start from the ground up. And, I, and for me, these are. Um, and the, there, there's a fourth one called the 22 Steps of Master Storytelling, which is really advanced. But um, essentially, if you had those four books 
and you read them. And I, I, I think if you read them in a certain order, um, you'd be like, whoa, mm -hmm. you know, but it's a lot, it's a, it is a lot. You have to be, you know, which is why I'm trying to take all of my knowledge, all these books, all these, all these years of, um, what I've learned, um, and to teach it in my writing class to make it a little bit easier and faster for people to, um, do. And this last one, hold on, this has nothing to do with writing, but I love this one. Cool. No, we really yeah. appreciate the, your, yeah. your tips. I think they are really valuable and also based yeah. on your experience. So we recommend for people to go for them. And yeah, uh, yeah so uh, talking a bit about ethics, uh, on, on your opinion, what are the ethical considerations for, for AI filmmakers? Maybe I think maybe focusing more on AI film, right? Because we are using all these models and also maybe reference from styles or other artists. So... Do we, what are like your ethical considerations or what do you have in mind when talking about ethics and AI, AI move making? Um, I actually touch on this in my, in my classes. Um, there's a whole section on it. Um, and really it comes down to, for me, it's that I've, if um, these models, whether it's image, video, text, if all these models have been trained on all of humanity on the internet, um, and maybe through scanned manuscripts, physical stuff, I have no idea. Um, I don't really look at it as stealing because um, my art is based on what other people have created, right? Um, I'm looking at all of humanity from the, from the dawn of <laughs> the first breath of life on this planet that, to this moment. Uh, that's, that's my influence. And so if these models are trained and influenced on, for the sake of this conversation, let's just say they're trained on the internet from day one to this conversation, um, that's, that's a portion of humanity. And ethically, I don't think it's wrong to train computers to look at humanity and to create something or to, or to build a tool to use all that data to help me create something. I don't see what the big deal is. Conversely, as an artist, um, especially, especially cause I can't physically paint or draw. Like I have the ideas in my head and I can draw stick figures. I can draw shots, but I've never been trained or even know how to attempt to do a real painting. Um, so I can see from that perspective how it's like, oh, it's stealing. But also I had my novel online for, you know, 12 plus years. And if the theory is right, that it was trained on the internet these models, then my, my work was also trained on these models without my permission. And at no point in this process have I been upset, mm -hmm. <laughs> tried to sue somebody, tried to join a, a class action, none of that, because I just don't care personally. And so the ethics, and what I'm trying to teach this is that you should be aware of it as a, not only personally, and how, but you need to draw a line in the sand of how you feel about it. And don't let other people influence you and say it's stealing or say it's not stealing. Make up your own decision and move forward based on that. Use your own critical thinking. That's an interesting uh, point of view. I, I, I would just want to, to, to catch something here. I would like to know your opinion because there's some more uh, maybe can be extreme opinions, but I think there is some oh, sense yeah. on it uh, that says that uh, we are kind of starting the end of copywriting that will be impossible to have like copywriting. And so it's kind of like blending, right? Because we are training image models, text models, etc. Do you think uh, we are maybe starting to go to this world where there will be no copyrights in some way or drastically reduce the amount of copyright. I think there has to be a middle ground. It's inevitable. I, I just don't, especially when you have people like myself, and I know a lot of other people in the, in the partners program with Runway, they're, they've run into that issue of legalities of someone saying, do you own, is it, can I copyright this? If we buy this, if we buy this video from you, can we copyright it and distribute it under our, our name? And it's like, well, yes and no. Because, because there's no definitive answer on it. So th there has to be some middle grounds where I don't think copyright's going to go away, but I also don't think it's going to be as stringent and um, barricaded in the sense of that, you know, those are my opinions about it, but it's, it's very, I don't know. And here's the other thing too. If someone's going to steal something from you, clearly there's some value to it, right? A bike, a painting, whatever, an idea. So if they steal it from you, there's the, there's a part of me that is really mad because you, you took that from me. And on top of that, you took my idea and probably made a worse version of it because it wasn't your idea. But then the other side of me is like, well, I guess it was awesome enough to steal. So 
I don't know. Like, it's hard because I'm not like, you know, I'm not a movie studio executive that I have to answer to shareholders. I'm just an artist who's like, you know, put it this way. I've seen a lot of movies in my life that I saw illegally because there was no other way for me to see them. My theater was more. I hope was, the FBI will not come, but me too. But don't tell they, anybody. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if they come, I'll, I'll make them some food, make them some eggs and breakfast. It's all good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so like I, I, it's I, I go back and forth because I see I see the business angle of it. Like I really do objectively. Like like okay, like if you train these models on stuff without asking my permission, is that stealing? Well, I guess we're gonna have to go to court and find out. Um, but as an artist, I'd be kind of happy if you stole from me. And what's the saying? You know. Uh, I don't know, something about great artists, uh, they don't borrow, great artists steal or something like that. I don't know. And we're all stealing from everybody. Like, like own, own up to it as an artist and own up that you're making something based on your experiences as a human, based on what, what you know about humanity. So I don't know. But, yeah. Yeah, a gray I, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. I think it was Rick Rubin that said that there is a realm of ideas and we are all drinking from that idea That's so realm. Yeah. So it's, it's something that both people in simultaneously in the same time of the world, one living in Brazil, other in Japan could have the same idea and, and make it work in completely different ways because they, they will go through their filter, their, their person. Yeah. You know? yeah and it's all, crazy. yeah, and that's really beautifully put because it's, it's, I consider it all to be exponential and that's what AI has done for us. It's, it's accelerated our species in the sense of um, we're finding ways to express ourselves individually as artists, but we're collectively doing this together. And there's not, you, you think globally, how many people, A, are even aware of this, B, um, care, <laughs> and then C, know how to do it and know how to do it in a way that could win awards or, or get somebody a job at Coca-Cola doing AI advertising. You know what I mean? Like, um, that's the exponential side of it. And I think that is, to me, that's infinitely more important than people worrying about um, stuff being stolen or copyright issues. Even though those those topics are extremely important, artistically, I'm more in line with what you're saying, you know, of um, we're all pulling from the same ether. And if you try and act like that's not true, your opinion is yours. I just disagree. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. And then, uh, let's say for some of our listeners are interested in your classes, what are the three highlights you can tell them that they will learn in that? And like for you, who you recommend to be the people attending in the classes, if there is any prerequisite or anything like that, what can yeah, you yeah. tell us about? Those are, um, those are really awesome questions. Um, the first thing, like what are they going to take away from it? Three highlights for the writing course specifically my goal is to take somebody take somebody who has never written creatively and to show them how to um, take an idea and do the first process which is let's see if it's a good or a bad idea let's vet your idea let's run them through the vetting process and that's something i teach um, secondly now that you have the idea do you still love it <laughs> Are you still into this? Or was it sort of like you wanted it to be good, but it's not that great? So if it's kind of 50-50, let's, let's, um, let's develop that more, right? So let's build the foundation and let's build a framework is step two on top of that foundation, our framework for our home, our story home. Um, and then the third part is now we need to build that home, um, put walls on it and fill it up. And what that means is to fill it with people. Let's fill it with, let's fill it with characters. What's happening in this home? Who are these people? Why are they here? You know, um, did this guy stub his toe on the wall when he got out of bed at 3 a.m. to use the bathroom and now he's in a bad mood and that bad mood trickles down to everybody at the office and it's a big chain reaction. So that's, I want to show people how you can take such a simple thing and it really, really expands it into a, a universe if you, if you so choose and you know how to do it. So um, that's for the writing portion. And then for the, uh, it's called Midway Cinema. That's uh, where we'll focus on using Runway um, to, to edit, to create edit videos. Um, the biggest thing they're going to take away from that is kind of the same process. Step one is let's, let's take an idea that you want to develop 
Um, and let's let's work on a storyboard for that idea and see if see if there's some kind of story there. Even in four pictures, there could be a story right there. Um, and so that's that's kind of step one is to teach people how to use different to- like mid journey different tools just just to get your idea out visually, and then let's take that idea into runway. Let's start animating it. Oh, look what happened in this video. The animation went a different direction you weren't expecting. Maybe that could influence your character. That could influence the story. And that happened to me actually when I was doing a thousand miles where the characters would end up being animated a certain way, and that would like blow my mind. And I would write a script to better tie into the character's movements and um I'll yeah i see that you also. and other creators requesting more movement from from runway uh, because usually I, this in, unexpected uh, bizarre morphs that sometimes they can even become part of our stories right well yeah and i, and I want you, you should be able to have different models to choose from that'd be really nice if they had like a retro model from six months ago <laughs> um because i know their goal is to make it look as good i think their goal is to make it look as good as real video right eventually um But as a painter, as an artist, you want different options. You use different brushes for different for different pieces. Yeah. That's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, thanks, yeah. thanks for sharing. Yeah, yeah uh, totally. And real, like... real, real quick, just just the takeaway from the courses. I yeah, would encourage I, I would just encourage people that are serious about this or want to learn from me specifically to do the writing course first. You you can do you can do either or or both, but do the writing course first and um If you do if you do one of the courses or two, it doesn't matter. If you do one, you automatically have a discount. You can apply to the second one. Cool. Yeah, we, we, we recommend for, for every one of the community this uh, Milan courses. In the end, you can also share your links. We also put on the description and everyone so people can find you, of course, and also your, right. your courses. Thank and uh, yeah, we, we are heading toward the ends of this uh, pleasant conversation and insightful conversation with you. But we have a few more questions. Uh, so yeah, what are you working right now? What are you doing? Any cool projects? Anything you can share uh, with us? What What are you doing right now? Are, how are you guys on on time right now? You have to go. You have. Do we, do we need to get off the call in a few minutes? No, it's totally no, open. Well, okay. Um, give me one second. I'm going to show you something. Great. Right. Yeah. Let's see. Don't tell me about it. Show me. That's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> Let me see here. Give me one sec. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a um, little clip from a little trailer. I just want to make sure it's actually working. So... Can you also you can also check if you can share your screen? It's supposed to, I think. Yeah, 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 definitely. Let's see. You know, I might have to. Uh... Let me see. Um, you know what I'll do is I'll send it I'll, I'll send it to you on um on Discord because it's a big file, but mm-hmm. I have Nitro. I could I could send it over. Um, am I holding you up? I could do it right now. I just was I didn't no, I no, forgot no. how big the file. But was. if you if you if you need to check your permissions or stuff to share the screen, you can also send me the link. I can try to open here if you want. Cool. I don't know. It's up to you. Let me do. Uh, give me one sec. Of course, Discord kicked me out. Give me one second. I'll log in. All the time. I know, right? I'm like, what is happening now? While I'm finding this, what it is is a um, it's it's a I'm I'm adapting a novel I wrote um 12 years ago called Angel Tears. Um, it's young adult um fiction, and um, so I'm essentially adapting this for um. The film festival and then on top of that are uh, the runway film festival and i'll enter, enter it into other things but i'm also going to use it to secure financing to shoot um 10 minutes of live footage so that i can use the live footage to secure more money to shoot the real that's thing cool. yeah cool. so that's 
that's the ultimate goal. Um, dang it. I, this, this weekend I rebuilt my computer and, um, No, no, or you, or you can send yeah. us. Uh, we can we can cut the stuff, and you can send to us later, and we can put yeah, some yeah. overlay on the top or on the side when you are speaking. We can like put it some some parts of it. It's when, cool. uh, when yeah, we edit. Yeah. It's okay. I'll um yeah, but I will definitely send it to you because I I love your I trust you yeah. too. I, I also feedback. need to I also need to send you the Green Hackers preview because I also want oh, to submit sweet. it to the runway. Yeah, <laughs> the part Dude. one at least. Yes. I I've ever since you've told me about that, um, I've been thinking about it. I really well, want that's to see a good that. sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because it's unique. It's really it's passionate. You're it's it's unique. And um yeah. But to answer to answer your question, um my future projects are are that it's called Angel Tears and um gonna do it for the runway fest, enter it to everything else, etc. Um and then I'm also just doing other projects like this one project working um uh, with someone in Germany making um curriculum for children i'm doing a six to 12 year olds um of how to take these are children that are dealing with a lot of mental health issues um and they're part of a community where parents are trying to help that their, their, their parents are trying to help them express themselves artistically and so somebody approached me saying hey i saw that you're teaching these courses can you do something for a younger age group and so it's been a big challenge but also really eye-opening and fun to do and my goal with that um is to after we run it through all the kids that she has um, that she wants to work with um my goal would be to share it for a free version of it with anybody you know just put it on twitter and if you want to download this press kit you can basically use this curriculum and this outline um to teach children how to use these tools and what's really cool about runway is um these kids are going to come into the class with these hand drawn pictures. And some of them are really sad, you know, um, they're young and I'm like, how are you, how are you so sad at such a young age, but they're going through stuff. Right. Um, and so they're taking these pictures and they're going to upload them into runway and they're going to show them how they can animate them and, and use different tools to, to play with them and, and hopefully leave the class or, or the, the workshop that day um, with a little tiny video or something that they're proud of and, they feel good about and feel like they have an outlet to, to do something with. That's beautiful, man. Quite, yeah. quite amazing. Great opportunity and great great yeah. way of thinking of it. Good way to give back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And there is, I don't know, an idea or some future project that you didn't start yet, but it's something that, you know, boils on your mind, something that really you want to do before you die or something like that. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there there actually is one um, that I an idea I've had for years um, that's got a lot of good feedback when I've pitched it, and um, it's basically like dealing with what I feel are the issues with. <laughs> this is going to sound so I, I've never pitched it like this, but the idea of what does it mean to be like a hundred percent sober versus somebody that's like overdosed. Um, because I've had a lot of experiences um, with people that I've known over the years that have been on both ends of the spectrum. And sometimes I feel like obviously the overdose is terrible. Everyone's like, well, you should don't do drugs. Don't do, you know, but then the other end when somebody is so sober or so like just by just hundred percent, I feel like that could be equally damning in its own way and um so my next so that it's a project it's an idea i've had over that involves um people all the way in their 80s to people in their in high school all doing the same drug for different reasons um and um it ties into it, it it's all tying in and it's very It's very it, it's cool with runway now because I can do a lot of these visual effects like they they dream and they you know they have experiences but it's supposed to be an uplifted movie too but I, I it's kind of like it'd be like a three and a half it'd be like a three hour film you know where I'm where I'm telling a, a vignette of storytelling through many different age groups um, so that's that's something I would love to do before I die. That's an interesting idea. Just to hear about it, I'm, yeah. I'm interested. Uh, I think you should go for it, even if you're doing oh, small, small blocks here, one small block there. I think yeah. it's it's in, and I I think I agree with you. I also uh, had even like friends 
who got even a bit crazy uh too much drugs and stuff like that but i mean like real crazy and right. like during my life uh in brazil and so but i also from my experience i see i, I think i have a similar point of view as you like not i think on everywhere right politically anywhere the spec yes. the, the extreme is never too healthy yes. and uh i think it's all about balance right it's all about the right uh, i think everything in life it, it's about balance and i think yes. in the in the end it uh, okay it goes to taoism it can go to zen uh, but like i think balance is key of, of a good life and in balance on every sense uh you can apply it and yeah, respect 100%. respect your body respect uh, your feelings respect your moment. Uh, we are uh, always like changing, right? Everything. So yeah, balance for me is the key. I think. I, I have a friend that always says, uh, "Do a drug, eat a salad, all good." <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never heard that one. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> and you and you know, everybody goes through different stages of life, you know, and sometimes we we repeat stages, but we repeat them differently. Or when we never repeat a stage because it was awful. We don't want to do no, that again. Uh, right? Yeah, and I think it's also connected to all, even like Jung or Campbell ideas. That, that's the thing. Yes. There are archetypes. There are yes. patterns, yes. right? We are right. son. We are teacher. We are dead. We are. Yes. Uh, yes. But it's you're spinning the circles, but it is in three D, right? So it's like spiral. Mm -hmm. So yes. you go to the similar moments, but you are in another stage because it's going on this three D space. So it's a similar situation. But you are different, right? And your experience right, right. are different, right? Hundred percent. And that's the beautiful side of it is like that's what's been cool for me about getting older is to like kind of lean into that and lean into acknowledging nothing is finite. You know, everything is everything is you know, some things are are definitive, science, math, things like, you know, but overall we're always changing and we're always being fluid. And these AI tools I know have, have really increased that and, and us as artists. Yeah. 100% man, 100%. So we are getting to the end of the interview. We have a few more questions. And I always like to touch a little bit about creative blocker because it's something that almost every creator faces. So what are your techniques, your advices for, for filmmakers that are facing a, a blocker on their project or life go outside touch what, what, what does everybody say touch some grass yeah uh, i uh, i connect really heavily to nature water especially rivers ocean rain waterfalls and so just i know it's harder for people because some people you know either can't afford to go to nature because they live so far away or they're in the city or some people live in nature and they're sick of it and they want to go to the city, you know? Um, so I, I think just going outside and not being in, and, and like my, I call this my box, like not being in your box and um, really and if you're feeling, especially like you're disconnected. Um, I think, I think writer's blocks and creative and creative blocks, it's, it's not that it's a block. It's that um, it's unplugged from the wall. And that's a simple fix. And part of that simple fix is to go do some volunteer work. Go literally just Google it where you live. Fall, you know, <laughs> I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. So Salt Lake City, Utah volunteer work, a billion things pop up for all different kinds of subjects and especially filmmaking, you know, volunteer for people to help them out on their film, even for free. Just, but it's not a it's not a block. It's just unplugged. And you the only way to plug it back in is to get outside of your home and go interact with humanity and nature and go be around people that you can connect with. Um, and I would and people are like, well, maybe go on a walk by yourself. That that walks are terrific. But I think that when you're connecting with people, you're not thinking about yourself, and that helps you get, get plugs back in because then when you're by yourself you have these experiences and they might influence your creativity so that's a, a great advice uh, milan really really interesting uh, yeah, i'm really happy thanks. that we were having this conversation uh, <clears throat> i have uh, two last questions for you uh so which advice so you will give to someone who seeing this thing this ai thing and one maybe want to start making or maybe the person's already a storyteller or artists, or maybe not at all, uh, uh, which advice you will go for people uh, which are on the state and thinking about start something? And the latest questions will, the last question will be, 
uh, where people can find you uh, online. We will put on the description everything, but you can share uh, where people can find you. And yeah. Cool. Um, I would say just start playing around with it. Um, don't worry about learning anything else. Just I'm a runway fanboy. I don't know. I just did the way it happened. Um, so just open up runway, open up a free account. Um, you get some credits with your free account and start testing everything. If you don't know where to start, um, go to YouTube and type in Runway Academy. Go to the Runway's main channel and they have all their uh, videos up there where their main video architect takes them through how to use different tools. And um, so creatively, that's a great, great starting point is to just, I, I call it spill the paint. Grab a bucket of paint, open it up and just tip it over, hit it with a baseball bat, see what happens. <laughs> you can't go wrong. Um, and then once you get comfy with the tool, um, then move on to the storytelling aspect. If you're already a good storyteller, then really, yeah, learn how to use these tools and learn how to how to edit. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. And then where people can 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 find you online? Uh, Twitter's the best spot. You know, um, you can D DM me. Um, you can also just use my email, info at milanqcuck.com. Really, just that email and the Twitter are the best best things. But I'm, I'm, I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. All right. Pretty yeah, we will, yeah, we will put all your links so people can, can reach out and follow your work more, more closely. So, yeah. man, thank you very much for taking our time to talk with us. We know that life is busy. Uh, we yeah, are all, all like we have our normal jobs and everything <laughs> and we are doing this ai thing uh yeah so thank you we really enjoyed the uh, uh, the conversation so uh mauricio do you have any closing uh, notes yeah man just thank you first nice to meet you and yeah, you too. great, thank great you. conversation <laughs> was super inspiring and yeah thank you very much for both your movies your course and everything they're providing to the world i think we need people that are sharing and, and giving to the this community so so really think about that and yeah uh, we would like to finish with some inspiring quote uh, yeah. that we are finding and for this week we're going to Rick Rubin which is I think one of the greatest creative minds in the world right now and what he says is look for what you notice but no one else see so I think I that's that. a good, good way to join to this conversation that's beautiful. Thank you so much for having me, for everything you're both doing for this project. And um, I want to be clear too, you don't have to include this if you don't want to, but um, I know how hard you're, you're, not only you, but everybody's working on stuff uh, for GPT. So I want to, I just want to be clear that it's not that these tools that you can plug, that, that, it's not that the plugins are bad. It's just that if you open up GPT with a brand new account and you're like, tell a story, you know, that's not great. But the, the stuff that you're, the custom stuff that like people like you are making, um, that's a lot of work. And so I, I want to give the respect where that's due because that's going to be very helpful to people to kind of go from zero to, to 100, basically, where they can learn something quickly and not feel embarrassed about asking the questions too. You know, that's, that's really important. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I think even for RGPT, I, I made it really important for me that I, teach people how to really use it. So I recorded a first tutorial, which was like 30 minutes to get the first script writing of interaction and like, okay, let me reduce a little bit, but teaching people that, Hey, it's a process and it is here to guide you and help you. But the ideas, the creation, the narration, everything it needs to come right. from you. Otherwise it's, it's, it will be soulless, you know, it's, it's... And that's a, and that's a really good way to put it is the, is the soulless aspects, right? Is that like, I don't know if everybody is understanding, you know, how important that is. And because I had people flat out ask me, you know, how come your movie got into these festivals and like, and, and mine didn't. Right. And it's like, well, um, I, I for sure can't say a hundred percent, but what I do know is that, um, a lot of people likes my story. And so I, I, I don't mean to be like a broken record and keep going back to that. Um, but to me, that's a, that's imperative, right. It's just, that's how you're doing how you're doing your story all right um, so it's, it's yeah. such Thank a great you. conversation so we are we are ending our, our zero one cast uh thank everyone if you're still here with us uh it was a pleasure and yeah wait soon we'll come with more more guests here there's many talented storytellers and filmmakers in our community we want to talk to them 
uh yeah and that's it uh awesome. let's do it thank you for having me <laughs> thank you guys <laughs> thank you. thanks man uh -huh.